Mark chapter 6, chapter 11, excuse me. How many of you know, you don't know, that you don't know anything else, that your worship is for real? Yeah. I want to put a plug in. The song, My Worship is for Real, was written by Bishop Larry D. Trotter and the Sweet Holy Spirit Church. CMWC on March 15th. Our father, Bishop Trotter, is coming back to CMWC. It's a Wednesday night of worship. How many of y'all remember the last time was here? He was here. He blessed us tremendously. And so we are excited. May 15th. Amen. We'll save the date on that. We'll talk more. He's going to be with us for one night, and it's going to be amazing. So now, God, I ask that you remove Randy out the way and prepare us for preaching power. This is your word. These are your people. Thank you for the assignment that is on me for today to share. I pray, God, that you let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm reading from the King James Version. You may have different versions as well. But the wording is slightly different message stays the same. Y'all yeah. gonna give me a good 15 to 17 minutes of your time? Yeah. Amen. 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 Beginning at verse 1, chapter 11 of the gospel according to Mark. Pausing at all commas, stopping all periods. This is the word of the Lord. And when they came nigh to Jerusalem unto Bethlehem and Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, he sent it forth two of his disciples said unto them, Go your way into the village over against you, and as soon as ye be entered into it, ye shall find a colt tied there, whereon never man sat. Loose him, and bring him. And if any man say unto you, What do you do this? Say ye that the Lord have need of him. And straightway he will send him him. And they went their way and found the colt tied by the door without into a place where two ways met. And they loosed him. And certain of them that stood there said unto him, What you doing loosing that colt? And they said unto them, Even as Jesus had commanded. And they let them go. I want to preach for a little while using as a subject in the continuation of our series, You Can't Stop My Miracle. Just very simply these words, He needs me. Look at your neighbor and say, He needs me. I'm not here today, my brothers and sisters, on this rainy Sunday to really preach a sermon. As much as I'm here today to kind of prophesy to somebody in the house, for somebody in here, today is going to be a day of real deliverance. Bondages are going to be broken. Whatever has held you captive is going to have to let you go. The enemy's power is about to break over somebody's life, not just for a season, but for good. I'm going to work the simplicity of the text, and then I'm going to deal with what the Lord has assigned me. Jesus speaks to his disciples and he says to his disciples in the text, go into town and when you see the colt tied up, loose him and bring him to me. I must confess and I must say it with a humble submission that Jesus has made me one of his disciples. And because he's made me one of his disciples, I want you to know that he sent me to tell you you're about to get loose. I am not here to entertain you nor to be entertained. I'm on an assignment. And I'm on a mission to destroy the works of the devil. Because whether y'all believe it or not, my brothers and sisters, the enemy is a trespasser. He has no rights or authority over your life. So everything that he holds concerning you, he holds it illegally. Jesus said, watch this, loose him and bring him to me. And then he tells them something that I need you to catch. He says, because once you lose him, expect opposition. Yeah. 
But once you lose him, expect resistance. Expect confrontation. In other words, expect a fight. Because I don't care how much you love Jesus, the end result is always going to be the devil never surrenders without a fight. But the point is, for three of y'all, as I move on, when the master commands you to be loose, can't nobody or nothing hold you and ain't no devil big enough to keep you bound. Jesus says, watch this, he says, the reason why you're loosing the colt is because I need him. Oh, here we go. The master has need of him. And can I tell you in the building that I don't care where you've been, what you've done, or what you're doing. The bottom line is, no matter where you are in life, God still loves you. Some of y'all should have clapped a little bit louder. And not only does he love you, but he still needs you. Y'all not saying? Truth, I'm sorry. Truth be told, all of us in here are either two letters of the alphabet. You either an X or an R. Come on. You either an X something or you still are something. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. We were all bound by sin and by Satan, but Jesus set us free. And I've come to tell somebody in the building that you are valuable and you are vital to the plan and the purpose of God. That's the message of the gospel, my brothers and sisters. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Every soul that can hear me under the sound of my voice, you are valuable and vital to God. God paid the highest price that he could pay when he gave his own son to redeem us back to himself. Tell somebody, I'm vital, I'm vital. Maybe you can't say you're vital because you don't know what vital means. It means that you are needed. It means that you are essential. It means that you are necessary. You are crucial and you are critical. My brothers and sisters, your body can't live without blood, liver, kidneys, lungs, or a heart. And just as that your body can't live without a liver, a lungs, kidney, a heart, you ought to understand that you're just as vital to God as blood is to your body, as liver is to your body, as kidneys are to your body. Now watch this because here's where I'm going to lose you. I'm guilty of saying this and many of y'all too. We've heard it so many times. God don't need me. But I sure need him. God can make it without me but I sure can't make it without him. And I know y'all, here it comes. I, I feel it getting tight already, but I'm going to push through it. I, I know that sounds so humble and so spiritual and so self-denying and God-exalting. But the truth is, it's not biblical. It's actually opposite of what the Bible teaches us. Because when you say, I don't, God, God don't need me, but I need him, what it really forms is separation between you and God. Oh, here we go. So it puts God's power and his anointing on the outside of me. And so we think and been brought up in church to believe that God's way up in heaven with all his power and glory. Sits on a big old throne with the seraphims and the sherifframs and us is way down here on earth, weak and lonely, barely getting by with one foot in the grave and another one on a banana peel. Just hoping to touch every now and then of the Holy Ghost just so we can make it over yonder. And it sounds spiritual and it sounds humble, but it's not biblical. Because my Bible says my body is the temple. Of the Holy Ghost. Y'all not saying nothing. My Bible says in 1 Corinthians 3 and 16, 1 John 4 and 15, that God dwells in me. In fact, my Bible tells me that God lives in me and walks in me. In other words, he don't just call me up or text me or email me. He don't just drop by for a visit every now and then. He has permanent residency on the inside of me. So that means wherever I show up, God shows up. Y'all don't want to talk about when I get there, God is there because I showed you all ain't there. And the kingdom of God is not a place somewhere over the rainbow where I go when I die. No, the kingdom, I'm going to preach because I feel it coming. The kingdom of God is a present tense reality. And 
and it's here right now. Tell somebody, it's here right now. And it's not just here right now, but it's in me and it's in you when you receive the king over your life. Yeah. Yeah. I got some Bible scriptures. Pastor Hobbs, I ain't teaching everybody. You tell me when I get home. Luke 17, 20 and 21 says this. The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, look here or look there. For behold, watch this. The kingdom of God is within you. That means that the authority of God is not on the outside of me. I've got power, Lord Jesus, on the inside of me. So when I show up, not only does God show up, but the kingdom shows up. The kingdom of God, according to Romans 14 17, is not meat nor drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy. Watch this, in the Holy Ghost. So in other words, if I'm operating in kingdom, I can't operate in kingdom and I ain't got the Holy Ghost. Huh? 1 Corinthians 3 and 9 says, for we are laborers together with God. Notice it does not say for God. Come on. It says with God. So in other words, I'm in a covenant and a partnership so that work can be done here on earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I told you when I came back. I ain't preaching no simple messages. You're going to catch this. Uh, uh, God is a spirit. We agree with that? But the work can't be manifested until he's attached to some flesh. God is a spirit. Come on here. But he needs flesh to touch flesh. Y'all not catching this. Which means he needs my hand to touch. He needs my feet. Y'all not talking here. To walk in the places. That's a manifestation of who his spirit is. That means when I open my mouth, it ain't me talking. It's the Holy Ghost speaking. Y'all ain't got to talk back in here. His spirit dwells in me. It's the anointing. So it's like a partnership. He needs my flesh, but I need his spirit. Yeah. This too deep, y'all. He needs me as much as I need him. Because somebody got to come to earth and do what his assigned purpose is. Okay. If your feet don't go, God don't go. If your hands don't reach out, God don't reach out. If you don't open your mouth, God don't speak. Romans 10, 14 and 15 says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they've been sent? Just as Jesus brought God to us, now our assignment is to bring God to other people. We are continuators, which means Jesus started it, but we got to continue what he started when he was here. Y'all not, this too big, this too big. That ain't nobody here but me and you. One of the greatest, man, I got stairs. One of the greatest weapons fish of the enemy. Y'all gotta say, man, just me and Gwen here. It's for the enemy to make you feel like you ain't enough. Because you feel that just because you still are work under construction, that God can't use you. And the enemy will make you believe that the power you have is not qualified to be used because you're still stuck in some stuff. But baby and brother, I wish I had a praise to realize the enemy ain't going to make me feel no less of a believer because if God can use anything, he can use me for his glory. I ain't got to be perfect. I just got to be willing to be used. The master. That's so good. Thank you, Nelly. 
Master, the second self. Master, I need of you. Pass that down your own say, God needs you. Care what the devil told you, God needs you. Truth be told, I don't care what these church folks told you. God can, let me just pause here. Because what happens is, church, church has gotten, I'm going to preach because I'm going to Church has become so industry instead of ministry. So, nothing, for some people, excellence means perfection. When really, excellence means development. Which means you ain't got to have it right once you get started. But I'm going to have enough patience while you're going through the process. So together we can celebrate the finished work of the gift. That's all. Okay, listen. When I first started, John Dwight. When I first started in church, I was four years old, and I wanted to play the drums. Caden already had drummers, Dean Taylor, Anthony Saint. Come on. They were the drummers. But every time they got up, I would still be one of them funeral home fans, tear the apart, and start beating on them drums. I praise God. For Pastor Benny. Because he never told me to get up. Lord have mercy. I wasn't keeping timing, but he never told me to get up. I wasn't playing like them, but he saw something on the inside of me. That other people would have got uh, frustrated and you got to get up, you ain't doing it right. You, no, but he saw something to develop in me and had enough patience, once said, to let me go through the process to strengthen the gift that was on the inside of me. When I got tired of playing drums, I started playing the organ. Uh -huh. I did not sound like a musician when I first started playing. Uh -huh. Lord, have mercy. Uh -huh. I didn't have no three finger chords. I had one finger, two finger, and none of them chords, none of them matched what I was trying to do. But he had enough patience to let me go through the process to the point where he would let me come in and practice by myself. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. And when I kept working my gift at the age of 12, I became the minister of music of Canaan Missionary Baptist Church. The thing I want to shout with some of y'all is, we ain't got to look for nobody on the outside to do what you got the gift to do on the inside. We got to just be willing to let you have the patience to go through the process so you can be what you ain't in the house just to be in the house. You in the house because your gift, your calling, and your anointing matters to this body. Somebody say, I may not be with a microphone, but baby, I got a ministry. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. I may not be able to sing, but I'll give you an usher signal to make you want to join the usher boat. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. 2,000 years ago, God lived in the body of a Jew named Jesus. But today, he lived in the body of, say your name. Through your body, God is going to manifest himself. And reveal himself to the world. Jesus says. Jesus says. You are the light of the world. You are the salt. Come on. Of the earth. So not only do I got favor. I got flavor. And you may not like my taste, but somebody bland without me. That's your problem. You trying to sprinkle yourself on somebody that ain't sick. Okay. Second Corinthians 3 and 6 says this. When you feel inadequate, the Bible says, He has made us. This is going to shout you, Jack. Able ministers of the New Testament. See, watch this. I want to throw this in the house. I know this ain't a simple Palm Sunday message. And uh, Anyway, so you are able. So, so pastor, what makes me able? I'm glad you asked. Uh, first of all, you able. I don't know who this is going to shout because I'm getting happy. I know I'm going. That's all right. Uh, you able because you got, watch this, 
the blood of Jesus. That didn't move you, okay? Uh, you able because you got the name of Jesus. That didn't move you either, huh? Okay. You, you able because you got the word of God. Y'all ain't gonna say that. That didn't move you. Maybe this is a movie. You're able because you got the power of the Holy Ghost. You're able because you've been chosen. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You are anointed. Don't you fool yourself. The anointing just ain't in the pulpit. Sometimes it's more anointed in the pew than it is in the pulpit. You are able. Tell somebody you got the right stuff. God needs you. God wants you. I'm about to, this ain't arrogance, this is assignment. Can't nobody do it like you. Other people can do it. Y'all ain't saying that. That's why I don't get intimidated about businesses. Because everybody can have the same business idea as me, but I'm anointed to work it the way God assigned me to work it. So a whole bunch of y'all can do hair, but everybody can't twist it like you. Y'all ain't. Everybody can do nails, but everybody can't do it like you. Y'all, come on, talk to me. You are special. You are original. You are uh, still like I'm about to. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. There's something about you, boo, that can't nobody do but you. So that preaching now. If you don't say it, it can't get said. And there are people who are waiting for you to stop making excuses why you can't be who God called you to be. Because it's your touch that's going to change their life. Lord, have mercy. If you don't touch them, they ain't going to get touched. You're the one. That's the only Bible that some people are going to ever read. You're the only form of Jesus that some people are going to ever see. You have their hearing. You have their deliverance. Pastor, I ain't got no license. You don't need no license. I ain't been called to preach. Ministry means serving. You're a minister. That miracle ain't coming through Pastor Parker. That miracle is coming through you because your testimony is going to put something on the inside of them that can say, if Sister Girl made it out of all that mess, surely there's got to be a God somewhere that if he brought her out of that stuff, he can bring me out. Y'all ain't saying nothing. The only reason what you're saying stuck a bougie self that you in church this morning ain't because you've been perfect. But the fact is millions didn't make it. But you're one of the ones who and you can sit silent and stop instead of telling somebody, look where the Lord brought me from. You got that breakthrough. And what you don't understand is your humility really is a form of false humility. They don't like this. I don't care. It's good to me. It's good. It's good. It's good. We always tell people, don't look at me. Look. I ain't nobody. Don't look at me. That ain't biblical. Because in the book of Acts chapter 3, there was a man that was at the gate called Beautiful. I'm going to get happy. And as they were going up, John and Peter were going up to the temple during the hour of prayer. This man was asking for alms. He was asking for money. And the first thing Peter and them said was look at us. Watch this. I can say boldly, look at me because I know who's in me. Because if you look long enough, you ain't going to see me, but you come on. He says, look at us. Oh, 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 oh. Because once you get loose, your language changes. When you bow, you can't speak authority. But once you get loose, you can walk in boldness and say, look at me, because I got something. I got someone on the inside of me that if you look long enough, it'll set you free. Yeah. Peter says, no. Okay. I'll get out of my belly. 
Oh, I'll that one out too. Okay, I'm done. Set up. Silver and gold. Have I none? But such as I have, I'm going to transfer it to you. Wait a minute. You ain't got silver? Uh uh. You ain't got gold? Uh uh. Well, what you got? I got the name. I wish it was old church Cause the new church Is so hooked on money, clothes, and cars But the old church In the storefront church When you said the name Them folks used to tear them pews up Cause they had a flashback That when they called on the name of Jesus It stopped bullets from coming over them When they called on the name of Jesus It stopped the car accident from hitting them I had about a hundred and two of y'all that know I may not have a whole lot of money. I may not have fancy cars, but at the name of Jesus, something has got to happen. And I wish I had a praise in here. Rise up and walk. Rise up 
hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. 